Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside the MGM Grand here in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This bout is scheduled for 12 rounds for the vacant WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Our judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Max DeLuca, and Patricia Morse Jarman. The man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Russell Mora. Ladies and gentlemen watching on ESPN, this is boxing, this is top rank, and this is the main event! Fighting out of the blue corner, presented in association with Thompson Boxing and Banner Promotions. He weighed in at 125 pounds, wearing black trunks with gray trim. He brings a perfect record, 18 wins, no losses. Five of those victories coming by way of knockout. He is the WBO number two ranked featherweight contender from Salinas, California, Ruben Drac Villa. Fighting out of the red corner, presented in association with Zanford Promotions. He weighed in at 126 pounds, wearing blue trunks with white trim. He brings a record of 32 wins, one loss, 28 victories by way of knockout. He is the WBO number one ranked featherweight contender. He's the former junior featherweight champion of the world from San Juan Citlantepec, Mexico, Emmanuel Vaquero Navarrete. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Acuérdense, quiero una pelea limpia. God bless you both. Touch up. Dre, yesterday when we visited with Ruben Villa, he made one of the comments that really got our attention, and it was simply, I cannot fight Navarrete's fight, not even for one single round. Yeah, that's going to be hard for that to happen. I mean, the reality of the situation is this is a 12-round affair, and you're going to find yourself in moments and in spots where your opponent likes to be, and you have to beat them there as well, so you can go and box and fight your fight. And I think sometimes that's lost on people when you hear fighters say, hey, I want to box. There's times when V is going to have to fight the, with the right amount of time to get his respect so he can't go back and box like he wants to. See, that's exactly what Villa needs to do, what he just did right there. He didn't get a chance to make Navarrete pay, but he needs to take advantage of every situation, every mistake, every overcommitting that Navarrete does, he needs to make him pay. And we often see plenty of that with Emmanuel Navarrete. I think these first couple of rounds are crucial for Villa because Navarrete is a notoriously slow starter. He'll give up the first two or three rounds to collect data, find his range before he starts to warm up. Villa can't let him get going. You can already see some redness around the, the right eye of Villa already. From the jab from Navarrete. He was very confident, as was his entire team, in sizing up this fight, saying Navarrete is the perfect style for us. Yeah, that was putting it nicely, Joe. Yes, <laughs> they were overly confident. Oh. Nice left hook right there. That was part of the, the plan, the essentials by Navarrete. You see Villa standing his ground. He stays close enough so that way he can counter. He has a shorter arm in this, in this matchup. And he steps out of range when he needs to, but then he comes back in range quickly to try to land some offense. But nice step around right there from him. Mention the reach, 66 and a half inches for Villa to 72 inches for Navarrete. You see adjustment from Navarrete already starting to get a little frustrated so he's trying to change the rhythm up with his punches oh, oh! 
And the uppercut scores the knockdown here in round one. Five, six, seven, eight. Come here. Awkward, okay but effective. So the undefeated, upset-minded Ruben Villa ends up on his seat and ran the ground up now. Now let me present this to you guys because Villa comes in here with the amateur pedigree, being a slick boxer, 18-0. Never had to deal with adversity of injuries in his career. Never had to deal with cuts in his career. And never before that awkward but effective left uppercut had he ever been knocked down before. Now you got to deal with something. Well, this is what championship moments and championship fights are all about. Now the fight starts. Yes. Not in the fighter meeting, not in the buildup. Now when you face some adversity, now you got to ask yourself, do you really want it? That's what Via has to ask himself right now. Well, let's hear what they're saying in that corner of Ruben Villa. Bernardo. Dean Hamilton was telling me, look, he's playing it too deep. He got too close to Navarrete. He was in range. And what he needs to do is counter. He needs to move off the line and make sure he makes him pay because he's lunging with his shots. You know, and most of the time, that's a great point that Bernardo makes of, of what the corner is saying. But most of the time, fighters understand that threshold of where you are. But that's when you're facing a conventional guy. Yeah. That left uppercut, there was nothing conventional about it. It was set up. Navarrete put him in that position. He got him used to the hook. He was throwing the hook. And then he just changed the changed the angle of the punch. Came right up the middle. He knew it was going to be there. That was set up. Mm. Navarrete switch hitting. Looking for that power left hand. Up until that point, Villa had boxed almost a perfect round. Now, what did we say earlier when we set up this fight? <laughs> Got to be perfect. Nothing perfect about the other guy, and he doesn't care. But it's tough to be perfect every step of the way. Well, that's what I said in the outset. Is that it's like that's almost impossible. Yes. Like yeah. you can't be perfect every round. You're not going to be able to box beautifully for every second of every round. It's just not. It's not a reality. It sounds good, but it, it doesn't happen in real life. Leo trying to split the guard with the left hand of his own moments ago. Looking to settle in here for round two as he goes to the body with a left hand. I disagree slightly, Dre. The reason why I disagree is, is that if you have the attributes, if you have the size to be able to deal with a fighter like Navarrete, let me give you a name. Shakur Stevenson, a guy that's a slick boxer, a guy that knows every avenue. That That's just as slick as this guy, if not slicker, than Villa. I think he gives Navarrete problems. Yes, Navarrete will have some moments, but I just believe that just the sharpness and the boxing skills of Shakur Stevenson will give well, this not, style I'm not problem. denying that, Tim. I'm just saying in terms of being perfect and not making any mistakes, Shakur makes mistakes, Floyd makes mistakes, everybody makes mistakes. The question is, when you make them, can you recover? And that's what we're trying to see if Via can recover from that uppercut. It was Shakur Stevenson who vacated this belt to move up to 130 pounds, creating the opening that these two are now fighting for here tonight. Going to take a short break. Come back to Vegas in a moment. Joe, Tim, and Dre ringside with you. Round number three of our world title fight. Emmanuel Navarrete having scored the knockdown in round number one. After that second round, a much better second round for Ruben Villa. He was 13 of 57 on connects. Navarrete still was 16 of 71. Sam and Max Garcia in the corner of Villa said, do not stand there and trade with this guy. A warning they have been drilling into him for eight straight weeks. Tess, you see the feint right there just a second ago from Navarrete. He's trying to get Villa to lean down. He's trying to set up the uppercut once again. Maybe the right uppercut or maybe the left. I'm not. I'm unsure at the moment. Look like the left right there, but great job right there from Villa stepping yes. back, making him fall short and then countering. That's what he needs to do all night. You no, know, it's easier said than done, but Villa's got to have a short memory. He's got to put that second round behind him, and he's got to pick up the pace and and do what he did you know at the in the beginning of that round which is which is box beautifully excuse me the first round box beautifully and and come behind the jab and trust his ability you got caught with a shot you got knocked down but that doesn't mean that you're out of the fight see those are perfect opportunities right there to make Navarrete pay especially when he commits he threw a right hand then switched into the southpaw stance those are perfect opportunities great moments where he's off balance he's not ready 
for any offense. Via needs to take advantage of those opportunities. And Dre, what Timmy just brought up, he mentioned to us last night when he said, I have to take advantage of when he misses, of when Navarrete makes mistakes. He said, listen, he's long and it takes him time to pull those long arms back. He says the strength of his, the length of his arms gives him certain offensive advantages. But for his opponents, it can also create opportunities, has to take advantage of some of those opportunities. Yeah, he does, but that, that's the problem, you know, with, with the instruction in the corner. They don't want him in front of Navarrete, and, and they want him moving. Well, he has to be in range to get hit in order to hit, if that makes any sense. You, you can't, you got to be in the lion's den to get your shots off and the land punches and, and even risk getting hit yourself. We all know that Navarrete is a notoriously slow starter. His corner understands that too. So they said, look, if he was able to catch him this early, it doesn't bode well for Ruben Villa because he has yet to turn it on. This is beautiful boxing right here for Villa. He's using his legs right now. Navarrete, he's, he's, a, he's allowing him to be aggressive, making a miss, and then occasionally making him pay. Villa cannot afford to stay still for one second. Two second rule for him right now. One, two, get out the range. One, two, get out of range. Trying to get into that rhythm with the jab now. Coming to the end of three. World title on the line here live from Vegas. Don't go anywhere. Navarrete now at 126 pounds, trying to become a two-division world champion. In against California's undefeated Ruben Villa, who was down in that first round. But, Dre, you made the comment, trust in your experience, your technique, the skills that you have, and he showed some of that in that third round with the counter punch. Yeah, Ruben Villa, you know, extensive amateur background. He knows range and distance, and you see it right here, two steps back, boom, just a disciplined jab to, net, to let Navarrete know that if you get reckless, I can hit you. As the fight progresses, you want to see Villa have confidence to let both hands go. That's how he's going to get the job done tonight. And Villa, you can still see the glossy look in his eyes. He's still a little shook from the early knockdown from Navarrete, which is to be expected, but he's got to shake himself so he doesn't look up in the ninth, tenth round. And he's given up too many rounds to Navarrete. He's got to shake himself. This is his opportunity. This is his world title fight. How do you possibly get ready for Navarrete? I mean, I watch him. He's switch hitting. He's awkward. He's a rule breaker. He's long. He's an aggressor. He's a volume puncher. How do you find somebody to mimic this in the gym? It's extremely hard, but you got to be honest about what he does well, even though it's awkward. And I don't think Team Via did that, at least when we spoke to him. They talked about how slow a foot he was, how, how slow his hands were, and how easy the boxing match would be for their team. And I didn't quite see it like that. He making right now he making Navarrete look like an amateur. Via is making him look like an amateur. Navarrete swinging all wild, missing wildly. Via standing under control, popping his jab out there. He's boxing beautifully right now. What he needs to do is just don't get too greedy. Boom, boom. Two punch combination and move. Two punch combination and move. Tim, I hate to break it to you, but Navarrete is giving in range. Stop. He's he getting in range, but he's he, not he, doing anything. He doesn't, up. He doesn't mind up. missing shots. Okay? I know. I understand that. Okay. I understand. I understand that. He don't mind missing shots. If Villa doesn't do something to make him think twice about missing shots and falling off, there it is. There it is. Second knockdown scored. It comes here four, in round four. Five. Short shot six, on the inside seven, from Navarrete. Okay. Eight. You want to fight? Yeah, I'm good. Give me your gloves. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He had never been knocked down prior to this. And now two times in four rounds when he's fighting for a world championship. There's that left uppercut again. Let go. Yeah, Villa threw an uppercut from too far away. That's why he got go. clipped. He's never that day's biding his time yeah. looking for the right shot and he found it. And Villa's hurt. Trying to become a two division world champion, Emmanuel Neverete. Mauling on the inside, looking for a right uppercut that time. Via still seemingly affected. We'll take a short break and show you that knockdown. Don't go Via there. Via threw the... Ducked his head. Via stepped back and said, okay, the upper's available. And then all of a sudden it wasn't. He's on the canvas. That's what's tough about Emmanuel Neverette. He's awkward, but it's effective. He is so much fun to watch. By the way, we told you nobody throws more power punches in this division. 116 power punches thrown through four rounds. Two knockdowns scored. Via still doesn't look steady. He's, not, he's right not steady. He it's doesn't look steady right now. It's just a matter of time before this fight's going to get ended. 
with a big shot from Navarrete. Navarrete looking for that left uppercut again, and then range finding with that right hand from distance. Villa just can't keep him off of him. Nope. As Navarrete said would be the case. There's work on the inside. Let's check in with Bernardo. And Dean Hamilton told me, look, he's not controlling the distance. He's got the quick enough feet to get into range, pop, and move out of the way. But he needs to do that consistently. <laughs> you know, I think they got a different, different uh, <laughs> rude awakening. I said someone was going to get exposed tonight. And right now it's Via getting exposed. He said this fight was going to be easy. That's what this team said. It's going to be easy. We are here in the midst of round number five. Last night we had a very long visit with Emmanuel Navarrete, and he's got all the swag and all the attitude of a guy who knows he's it, comes into the fighter meetings with sunglasses on. And then mostly fighters will dismiss when the question is asked, so when are you getting rid of him? He didn't. He said, by the end of round five, I will have my arm raised. That's we are in round yeah. five. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said. You know, it's funny when we come into the fight, I mean, I always ask him that because he said, he told me the same thing, what round he was going to try to uh, knock out Dog Bay in, and he said that he was going to, he was going to take him out, and he did. Those were two magnificent performances. First, when he won the title against the world champion, and then oh when he beat him down in the rematch. Did you see him jump up in the air right there? To <laughs> Navarrete he's, he's just jumped good. up in the air. <laughs> he's feeling good, Tim, and I think the upper is going to be the shot. Does whatever he wants. Can he close the show here the way he said he was? Trying to track him down. Oh. Via trying to survive. There was another left uppercut before Via falls in. Navarrete said, how, how are he going to stop me because he has no punching power? And I got bricks. Wait till he feel these bricks. That's exactly what he said. He will feel the bricks in my hands. And Via has. And he's feeling more of it here in this fifth round. A swarming attack from Navarrete. It's one thing to tell your fighter what to do. You got to tell him how to do it. It's always easier said than done. Mm -hmm. step back and try to throw the right punch, which, which was the uppercut when your opponent bends his head down, but then all of a sudden, Navarrete was right back on balance with that brutal shot. Very, very difficult for any fighter to deal with, especially a fighter, you know, like this, who's, who's got a, you know, there's a height disadvantage. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the experience of Navarrete, and Navarrete is showing why he's a defending former junior featherweight champion who defended his title five times before he moved up. Those were the two knockdowns, round one and round four, and then Timmy, in that last round, the fifth round, he threw a high 68 punches, landed 18 more against Villa. Well, that, you know, he's, he's in his rhythm. That motor's going. And Navarrete, he's, he's confident, moving forward, being aggressive. He's already hurt him already. And, you know, in his mind, he's just saying, hey, it's just a matter of time before I set him up for the big shot. And I'm going to get him up out of here. He's confident he's going to land that shot. And Dre, you note that, hey, listen, he's off balance and it doesn't matter. He, he, you said it earlier doesn't really have a style. He's formless. I'll tell you the style. Danger. Yeah. Danger is the style yeah. of Navarrete. He's perfected this style. Um, he gets in tip-top shape. He, he's a guy who's physically strong, even though he's got a long body. He doesn't look strong. Trust me, he's strong. You can just tell he's wiry strong. It's going to take a guy who is physically strong, who has a high IQ to deal with a guy like Emmanuel Navarrete. And, and here's something else, an attribute that we have seen bubbling up since he first came in as the title challenger, an upset-seeking title challenger when we broadcast his first fight against Dog Bay. He's got a little bit of nasty yes, to he him. Does. He's got a little bit of nasty in him that we keep seeing more and more of as his career goes on. Yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of nasty in him. You could, you could hear it when you talk to him, but he's cold and calculated. Mm -hmm. It's like we talked to him yesterday, and he said, yeah, he said, you know, Via, he's a good boxer, I respect him, but when he feels my power, mm -hmm. you know, it's nothing he's going to be able to He's trying to cut things off here against Via. <laughs> he said it was, that Via's going to make it difficult for him to catch him. Exactly what he said in the fight of me. Oh, oh body shot! shot. Right hand to the body. That'll stop you from running. Heavy, heavy shot. Placed right hand to the solar plex. That hurts. Just at the right time, right? You got a guy circling a ring on you. Let me put that right hand to the body. Man. Slow you down a little bit. Hit me in the face before you hit me with that. <laughs> and he switches. Remember, he's had success with that left uppercut tonight. 
Look at that. Lunging in with that shot right there. That's the Most shot he's still <laughs> looking for, Tim. He's still looking for the uppercut. He is. He's, he's trying to occupy Via with shots to the head. And then he's going to sneak that left upper up, you know, underneath as soon as Via falls asleep so a little bit more. But the crazy part is, is that you think he's, he's out of positioning to be able to throw a shot, and he's really not. He's got long arms. <laughs> Manuel Navarrete in complete control here. Damn. Via his dream of becoming a world champion. And now starting round number seven, already having been down twice. We are here at the MGM Grand inside the bubble. And this is an amazing stretch of top tier fights from right here. As we start round number seven of this WBO featherweight world title. A week from tomorrow night. It'll be the biggest, most anticipated fight that boxing has put together this year. It'll be the three-division champion, Vasily Lomachenko, Stop. against Teofimo Lopez, the IBF champion. The young bull against the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. And you know that Lopez has dynamite in his right hand won the title at Madison Square Garden, and then says, give me Lomachenko, let's go right to the top. So we will know who is the lightweight champion, four belts on the line next Saturday night. And what a reward for fight fans, not on pay-per-view, on ESPN. Watch your full day of college football and then settle in, and you don't even have to pay for Lomachenko and Lopez. Stop. Now back here, guys back there, let's go. Pedro Navarrete, who is Emmanuel's cousin, and his trainer said, look, we knew that at some point he was either going to run or fight because he had no choice. Right now he's still running, so I've told Emmanuel, don't get too desperate. Just walk him down. Take your time. He's going to be there eventually. <laughs> this is an awkward, awkward fighter, Navarrete. But, you know, I can see he has above average eye, ring IQ, right? You know, when he started the round, he, he dropped his level. He came down to the smaller man's level to have the reach advantage and to fight him in his position to be able to land his shots. And then he comes back up. He starts bouncing his toes. He changes his rhythm up. You know, he's doing a lot of confusing things in there to set up his offense. Look to place another right uppercut. Moments ago, we saw that forearm dre from Navarrete. Well, you talked about Navarrete being nasty. Well, well, here's some nastiness right here. Get off of me, I'm trying to land my shot. You're holding me because I know you're hurt. You don't want to fight, so get off of me. That's all that was. A little bit of little baby nudge. Get off. <laughs> I got a news flash, fellas. What's up? Navarrete is on cruise control, and he's been on cruise control this whole fight, even though he's done the kind of damage that he's done. We've seen him fight at a higher pace and at a higher level. He hasn't had to go there tonight thus far. Corner Villa, after that last round, said he may be tapering off a little bit. Villa tries to place a left hand. It's a right hand to the body. Tally right now has Navarrete at 84 total connects, Via at 77. Where the gap is most pronounced is that of the 84 total punches landed by Emmanuel Navarrete, 67 of them are power punches, including the left uppercut in the first round that scored a knockdown, and then the left hand that was well-timed against the uppercut of Via that scored the knockdown in the fourth round. So two knockdowns scored as we start round number eight here. That's the shot he's looking for right there. Trying to set it up, Dre. Dean Familton told me, look, he's feeling really good right now. Ruben's blocking punches with his hands, though, and that's not good because Navarrete is just too strong. I need Ruben to take advantage of those counter opportunities. He's making a miss, but he's not making him pay. What Navarrete is doing right now, he's trying to get Ruben comfortable. He's letting him run his offense, let him get in his position, getting close, and he's just looking for him to make a mistake so he can make him pay. Yeah, I'd like to see Via be more assertive, and I'm not sure that's in his temperament, but you've lost every round. You've been dropped twice. 
why not let your hands go? He's a good fighter. Ruben Villa is a good fighter. He's got a lot of amateur pedigree. He's undefeated coming into this fight. He's the real deal. He's just getting outclassed tonight. Give your, 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 yourself a chance. Let your hands go like that. You may land something. It's part of the reason because that would be plan B or plan C. There was so much talk about the perfectly executed boxing of plan A. And now that's got to go out the window with yeah. the hole you're in. Well, that's what it is. And now he has to take more chances and try to go for a knockout, even though he's not known as a puncher. You know, he's well behind on the scorecards. But Villa now, as like Dre said, alluded to, he has to fight a little bit more. Round eight here. Vacant WBO belt is what they're fighting for. Shakur Stevenson, a young U.S. Olympian who is a blossoming superstar, had this belt. Now he's at 130 pounds where everybody expects him to soon fight for a world title there as well. I'm just waiting on the shot, Dre. It's, it's coming. It is coming. He's trying to lure him to sleep. Navarrete is allowing him to work, getting comfortable, and he's looking for the kill shot is done in this last minute or minute and a half he's asserting himself he's letting his hands go yes Navarrete that's part of his strategy is to wait you out and want you know wait for you to make a mistake but I, I like the fact that V is not playing the game he's letting his hands go just like that much better round for Ruben Villa how great is that the monster is coming in a way the great champion from Japan will be fighting on ESPN Halloween night, of course. Last fall had the thriller against Nonito Donaire, and now the bantamweight champion of the world will be with us in just a few weeks. We'll be going up against Jason Maloney, who is one of the stars of the bubble this summer with his victory here at the MGM Grand. Maloney brothers back in town in Vegas, so in a way, and Maloney will be coming up on the 31st. So my biggest takeaway right now for Navarrete is, is that, you know, I said he had an above average IQ. He does. He needs to focus a little bit more on the body. When you get a guy moving like Villa's moving right now, side to side, trying to, you know, keep you off balance, go to the body. Start throwing those shots down to the body. He's head hunting right now. Like to see Navarrete pick things up. I think he's kind of fallen asleep the last couple rounds. That's why Villa's had to, you know, had a, some better Watch success offensively. And Villa, even though he doesn't have a lot of knockouts, he can hurt Navarrete. I know it doesn't seem like that right now, but if he lands the right shot in the right place, he can drop Navarrete and hurt him. And Navarrete should avoid that by just staying mentally focused and picking up the pace. Yeah, I agree with you, Dre, on that. You know, especially when it gets late in the fight, guys start getting fatigued. You know, you land a shot right on that chin. It really doesn't take much, Stop. much pressure, pressure to hurt a guy. Good. You know, Jesse Magdaleno turned this fight down. He didn't like the money. But looking at it now, maybe also uh, he didn't like Emmanuel Navarrete. Yeah, there's reason to uh, not like him when you see the offensive Ooh. output. The shot right there from Villa. Well, I, I, I think a little different about that. I think Magdaleno, with his experience, I think with his boxing ability, he got punching power in both hands. I think I think he would have gave Navarrete a run for his money. And he would tell you, right, the price has to be right for that. And I respect that. He has the punching power that can hurt a guy like Navarrete. Via trying to get in between those wide sweeping punches. There's another one of those windmill right hand uppercuts that basically starts below the hip and ends at the ceiling. Oh my goodness. Stop! Put your hand. Now Marete now in the in the southpaw position, he fights from any position. Doesn't matter. Doesn't he care. Land. He doesn't care, exactly. And, and, and he, will often, he will often punch himself into another stance. He'll throw a punch, end up switch hitting. He'll be squared up. There are no rules except for... There was a point much earlier tonight where we didn't think we would see the 10th round, but here is Ruben Villa, still hopeful, still out there. He's been boxing a bit better against the dangerous Emmanuel Navarrete. In fact, he has landed... 60 jabs. He's thrown 260. You knew that would be a primary part of both his weaponry and game plan. 
the 60 landed jabs. That is the most by a Navarrete opponent, according to CompuBox. But Tess, he's landing the right shot, but he needs to find a perfect opportunity to land the backhand, the power hand. I understand the jab is, is, is effective, but you got to have the cleanup crew to come through to help you out. That's how you win fights, power shots. And he only has five knockouts among his 18 wins. Well, it's tough to him because Villa doesn't want to open up because he's getting hit with shots that he can't see. He's getting hit with shots that he's not expecting. And he blinks and he's on the canvas. So that has him a little shook, you know, to not open up with his full offensive arsenal. There's a good example of what Navarrete will eat up. Give him an opening, come off balance, and he's going to throw back. He has landed 85 power punches tonight. He scored two knockdowns. And respect to Villa because he's way down on the cards. You know, he's getting outclassed, getting outgunned, and he's still in there. He's not winning, but he hasn't totally checked out. I honestly think he's just getting out. Honestly, I think he's getting out muscle. I think the power, the punching power of Navarrete has been the different difference in this fight. You know, Villa's boxing beautifully right now. But the minute that Navarrete lands a shot on him that he doesn't see, he goes down. You see that little turn right there, that was nice. It's a long striding left hand yeah, as he switched stances. But you see him lunge with that shot. Yes. I mean, that's just, uh, Tim. He breaks every Tim. every yes. rule Tim. in boxing, man. Yes, I have a hard time, I have a hard time with this, Don't get man. frustrated. It's not going to change. That's who he is. My just, just, just accept it. And enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, okay, he's he's he is one of those guys that, yes, you know, you want to see him fight because he's willing to to get hit, you know, and also land his offense, and he has big punching power. But boy, he's just one of those those guys. Just he has an ugly style, just ugly. Good right hand from Never That Got Villa's attention. Lunge right there, and that was a perfect opportunity for Via to land, and he didn't do anything. Five title defenses in nine months after winning a junior featherweight belt. And now here, trying to become a featherweight champion. Six minutes away from that reality. Rounds here between Navarrete and Villa, and Villa heard from his corner before he stepped out for this 11th round, saying you have to step in. You have to come with the straight left. You have to be willing to throw the right hook. They know the hole they're in. He's been in it for a while. He's been boxing better. But if you want those dreams to come through, you want to cash in, you got to take some chances, and they have to come now. This is newfound territory for Villa. He's never been in an 11 round. He's never been 12 rounds before. So he's handled himself well at this very moment. Boxing well from the outside. Thought he got good advice uh, during the during the end of that round from his team, saying that he needs to step up the pace, go downstairs, and also come upstairs with combinations. Take a little bit more chances, but don't trade with him. Don't trade with Navarrete. In front. You know, this is why you see a lot of guys in boxing today, you know, look for the easy route or the easy road to a title. You know, they'll wait out a, a, a champion and let them move up and go for a vacant title. There's different strategies that guys use in the game today because it's hard to lift a belt from from a from an established champion. And I know this this belt is vacant here, but you know, never that they didn't lose his belt in the junior featherweight division. He he willfully moved up. It's hard to break the wheel and and to beat a guy that's established and really doesn't believe that you can beat him. It's hard. And that's what V is finding out tonight. What? And as we've talked about, there's been more and more belief with every visit we've had with Navarrete that he is that guy, yeah. that unbreakable kind of champion. It's going to take a real fighter to beat him. And you're going to have to go through some fire to do it. And he wants that kind of a fight. That's what's crazy. He told, he told us, us that. Us that. In no uncertain terms, he said, I want to get hurt. I want to. I want that kind of fight. So when you're dealing with a guy with that kind of mentality, you better be able to match him or you're going to come up short. Baranchik Zapata was in this ring, Tim, six days ago. The fight of the year, the knockout of the year, a fight that many are talking about in terms of the last 20 years of boxing. Where do you put it on the list? Hmm. 
and he brought that up. He goes, that's the kind of fight I want to be in. <laughs> he started smiling. That's a warrior right that's there. That's taking it to the brink. Yeah, that, that's a warrior mentality. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, folks, if you want to see the spectacle, the eight knockdowns in five rounds, just go to the ESPN app. Click on boxing, click on, click on top, t top rank, and take 15 minutes of your day. You'll be blown away by Baranchek Zapata. Left uppercut again. 12th and final round will be coming up when we return. 12th and final round here. Ruben Villa settled in, boxed in the middle rounds, and here he is trying to go the distance against Emmanuel Navarrete who if he can coast home will soon be a two division world champion he started red hot scored the knockdown the first scored the rock knockdown in the fourth see this is what via needs to do he needs to stand his ground i mean he needs to go for broke now i mean he's behind on the scorecards big now he is it's just his chance now he got to try to knock out navarrete When Villa goes back and he look, he's going to look at this tape, you know, the round hasn't ended yet, so anything can happen in boxing. But when he goes back, he's going to see so many opportunities where he could have landed some offense, and he didn't. He took the walk, he went around. You know, he needs to counter punch more often, and he didn't do it enough tonight. And he's taking some shots right now from Navarrete. Navarrete still trying to land that left up. He is. He hurt him. He hurt him right there. But nice tie up right there from Villa. Trying to chase him down. Targeting that left hand. Now back to the orthodox stance. He loves pulling the trigger on that left uppercut, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And you don't see it coming, Tess, because it's coming from the floor up. That's right. <laughs> he takes that dip. It comes from down near the knee. And it's got, I, I described it as being like a windmill effect as the blade comes all the way up towards mm -hmm. the ceiling. I need to ask him, who taught you how to throw that punch like that? Let me meet that guy. I wonder sometimes when I watch him how much teaching was really going on in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> this is just I didn't want to ins say it, instinct, though. right? This is just being a fighter. But which is that, that's why I respect it because he, he's crafted a style based on his ability and inabilities that works for him and that if all goes well in the next 40 seconds, he'll become a two-division world champion. You got to respect that. How do you train for a guy like Navarrete? How do you train for a guy? You I mean, what kind of sparring partner you, 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 you going to You got to acknowledge what he does well. You got to obviously work on your mm -hmm. defense and stay tight. And I don't think being outside where he can land those kind of uppercuts is where you need to live. That's why I was concerned Stop. about we're going to box, we're going to box, we're going to box from Team Villa. You got to box, but then you got to attack this man and fight him in uh, mid-range and in close. Hit that body like we saw Villa do a couple times. And, 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 you know, that's the best shot he has. But laying on the outside, it's not going to do it against Navarrete. Boy, things change once you experience Emmanuel Navarrete as we come to... Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds here inside the MGM Grand, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Tim Cheatham and Max DeLuca have the bout 114-112. Patricia Morse Jarman has the bout 115-111 for your winner by unanimous decision. And new WBO featherweight champion of the world, Emmanuel Vaquero Navarrete. So there he is, new world champion, WBO featherweight champion, and now a two-division world champion, his first fight at featherweight, and he claims a belt, and he does so impressively. Emmanuel Navarrete.